There are many ways to seamlessly integrate JIRA and Confluence together, creating a better synergy of shared information between the two applications. In this video, you'll learn how to use the Product Requirements Blueprint in Confluence to create requirements pages that link to JIRA projects. The Product Requirements Blueprint in Confluence generates a pre-configured Product Requirements page and also creates an index page that is updated with metadata from all requirements pages in the space. Your team may or may not use the Product Requirements Blueprint, and how you use it is up to you. In this video, we'll use the Blueprint to assign one epic per Product Requirements page. Let's start by creating a new page and selecting the Product Requirements Blueprint. When you click Create, some information appears explaining what the Blueprint does. Click Create one more time to create the actual Product Requirements page. The Product Requirements template contains identifying information at the top of the page, followed by sections for goals, assumptions, and the requirements. All of this information is editable in any way you choose. After entering a name for the page, we'll customize the table by removing some of the rows that don't pertain to our project, and then we'll add a heading to the Objective section. When the page is published, we can see that in addition to the Product Requirements page we just edited, the Blueprint automatically created a Product Requirements Index, listing all the Product Requirement pages in this space that have been created from the Blueprint. Additional Requirements pages can be created directly from the Index page by clicking the Add Product Requirements button at the top of the page. A shortcut to the Product Requirements Index is also added to the sidebar for easy access. Now, let's add a link to the Product Requirements page that points to our JIRA EPIC. Edit the page and add the JIRA Issue Filter macro to the EPIC row in the table at the top. Search for the EPIC, then click Display Options and select Single Issue, since we only want one link that points to the EPIC. After publishing the page, you can click the EPIC's Issue key to navigate directly to JIRA, where the details of the EPIC are displayed. Notice that a link to the Product Requirements page has been automatically added to the Confluence Pages section. This handy link navigates directly back to the Product Requirements page. Next, let's add a new section to the Requirements page that contains a dynamically updated list of issues in the EPIC. Edit the Product Requirements page and add a new section where the list of issues will be displayed. This can be done anywhere on the page. Once again, insert the JIRA Issue Filter macro and enter a query that returns all issues in the EPIC. By the way, you can enter any valid JQL query. For example, our list could be configured to display all unfinished issues assigned to a particular user but for now, we'll simply display all issues in the EPIC. Make sure all the issues are checked and click Insert. A placeholder table will appear on the page. Publish the page to view the actual table results. Now let's add a new issue to the EPIC and see how this affects the table. Add a new story in JIRA. Now view the list of issues on the Product Requirements page. You may need to refresh the table to see recently added issues. Note that our newly created story in JIRA is automatically added to the table. Let's quickly recap what we covered in this video. We created a Product Requirements page using the Product Requirements Blueprint. We edited the page and added a link to a JIRA EPIC and we inserted a dynamically updated list of issues on the page. To learn more about this topic, enroll in the JIRA and Confluence Together On Demand course at Atlassian University.